The Vikramasinghe Hoyle theorem has been proved by many scientific sources, including Russian and East Asian findings. The theory explains panspermia, which is the existence of life beyond Earth. World-renowned Professor Chandra Vikramasinghe is the person behind the Vikramasinghe Hoyle theorem, and it brings such pride to Sri Lanka as Professor Vikramasinghe is a Sri Lankan. Professor Vikramasinghe, an astrobiologist, astronomer and a mathematician, is a director at the Astrobiology Research Center at the Ruhunu University in Sri Lanka. He did his primary studies at Royal College Colombo and later graduated from the University of Ceylon in 1960. Later, he also graduated from Trinity College, Jesus College and Cambridge. His research areas include organic molecules in space, Hoyle Vikramasinghe model of panspermia, detection of living cells in the stratosphere and extraterrestrial pathogens. The world-renowned professor visited the News First studios for an exclusive interview. Astrobiology is a synthesis of different sciences, astronomy, physics and biology. All of these divisions between the different branches of science they are entirely artificial, they are man-made. And so what astrobiology sought to do is to connect them all, connect, in particular connect biology with astronomy, physics and chemistry. It would help us to understand our true position in the universe, in the universe that is now regarded as being full of life, uh, of all sorts. So the question is, how do we relate to that huge uh, universe of life? Uh, it, would, it would give us, a, it would be a very humbling experience, I think, when human beings realize that they are not only not alone in the universe, but may, maybe there are people and creatures who are even more advanced, um, maybe much more advanced than ourselves in this huge universe of which we are a tiny, tiny part. So I think that would perhaps be a humbling experience and it would maybe be an important lesson for our politicians not to be so bigoted. I think we are on the threshold of really major discoveries in astrobiology that would change the whole way in which we think about life. For example, uh, we know now that the oldest life, the very oldest life on the earth uh, is f at a time when life could not have started on the earth or formed in situ on the earth. Uh, it's, uh, it's, f it's found in rocks, these old microorganisms, the fossil microorganisms have been found six months ago uh, in rocks that were formed 4.2 billion years ago. And 4.2 billion years ago was a time when the Earth was pounded with comet and asteroid impacts. It's, it was called the Hadean Epoch, Hades being the god of the goddess of the underworld. Uh, and so it's the epoch of hell in which the first, the oldest life is found. And there was no way in which that life could have been generated in situ on the Earth. And the implication is that it came with the impacts, with the comets and asteroids that were striking the planet at this time. So life came from Earth, came, came from outside the Earth, is um, really firmly proved in the uh, most recent work. The other uh, important discovery uh, recently is the discovery of planets that can harbor life. And these are uh, really quite plentiful in the galaxy. The total number in our galaxy, in our Milky Way, is something like 140 billion Earth-like planets. And each one of these can, can harbor, can nurture the forms of life that we have on the Earth. So th 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 these are just two of the, the recent discoveries that point to life being a cosmic phenomenon and pointing to the kind of astrobiology that uh, I have uh, developed myself over the past uh, nearly 35 years. Uh, the other and yet a third strand in this argument that supports the 
the point of view that I have been involved in, astrobiology that I have been involved in, uh, is the, the studies of uh, DNA sequences of organisms, of a variety of different organisms, of humans, of plants, of animals and so on. But the connection with uh, Sri Lanka is simply, uh, is primarily the connection that uh, uh, involves myself in many ways because astrobiology did not exist as a distinct discipline, a separate discipline until I became involved in it in 1970s, in the mid-1970s and uh, so the connection with uh, Sri Lankan being involved in astrobiology is one uh, important uh, thing to note. The other is that there have been, from time to time, there have been events in Sri Lanka that were relevant to astrobiology. For example, in, 19, uh, in 2012, there was uh, a meteorite fall in Polonnaruwa, and uh, this is followed by episodes of red rain, and we have been instrumental in trying to analyze this material and we've uh, found evidence for fossilized living organisms in the meteorite, in the Polonaro meteorite, and also microscopic organisms in the red rain that fell shortly afterwards in Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka has been um, associated with, bio with astrobiology, both due to my own connection with the subject and also recently with the events uh, that followed a meteorite fall in 2012. I think astrobiology would give us a new perspective of, of ourselves. It would extend the bounds of uh, human sympathy, if you like, uh, beyond the human race, beyond maybe extend it to all animals and all life on our planet and uh, go even beyond that to uh, link up with life throughout the universe. So it would essentially enlarge our perceptions of ourselves in relation to the, to the bigger universe and it would give us a, a more compassionate view perhaps of all other life. What's happened in Rahuna University is that the uh, university has approved the setting up of a national center for astrobiology at the university in Mathura. And what we hope to achieve there in the first instance is a virtual institute, a virtual center for astrobiology, linking up uh, all of the people who are involved in astrobiological research, mostly connected with my own network of researchers uh, and linking also with the, the campus itself, with Runa campus, with Dr. Mahanama, who is the head of the physics department uh, at Runa. We have two students uh, currently who have uh, projects that are related to astrobiology, uh, doing the master's degrees and PhD degrees uh, at the University of Runa. So, that's, that's the, the start that we have uh, achieved so far. Uh, but it's, uh, it's only the beginning and we hope that it would eventually, maybe on a very short time scale, uh, evolve into a major center of astrobiologic, uh, astrobiological activity in Southeast Asia uh, and maybe in the world. Astrobiology research generally is very poorly funded compared to what it, uh, its importance generally. Uh, but I think it's going to change as soon as we realize that we have to watch the skies and to monitor the skies, not only for academic interests but maybe even for our own safety, then the, uh, the emphasis would change. I really, th I really believe now that most of the lethal epidemics of disease that took place in the past were essentially from the skies. For, ex for example, in 1918-1919, there was an influenza pandemic that killed 
some estimated 20 million people around the world. Now, the, the type of influenza has been determined because there are corpses of the victims buried in ice that have been recently sort of um, studied and analyzed. The, their lung tissues have been analyzed and the virus has been found to be of a certain type. Uh, but the sudden emergence of this particular strain of virus is a, is a total mystery. And likewise, all of the, the major pandemics throughout history, pandemics that led to massive death, death rates, have been uh, driven, in my view, have, have been driven from the skies. Now, in the last, uh, so I think, 12 years, we have been using very modest resources to monitor the stratosphere for incoming organisms, for microorganisms. The, the first such investigation was done in 2001 in collaboration with the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, and we found evidence of microorganisms of various types. We haven't entirely um, sort of mapped all of the microbes that are coming in to the earth from, from outside, but there's a vast number of the order of uh, hundreds of tons in terms of total weight of microbial material is falling through the stratosphere onto the earth every single day. And these have come from comets. We also have studies of comets that have become very topical now in relation to astrobiology. There's been a comet uh, called 67PCG uh, that was studied by the, in the Rosetta mission. And I happen to be one of the uh, 400 old scientists on that mission. Uh, and we've got data that from the comet, this is remote sensing and space probe uh, sensing of the comet, we've found unambiguous evidence of microorganisms in the comet and the comets are throwing this material out and a lot of it is coming through to the earth. So as soon as people realize, uh, as soon as the authorities in the powerful countries realize that it may be important to monitor the infalling cometary material for our safety, uh, for example, if there's a, a new lethal form of uh, Zika virus or Ebola or influenza that is picked up in the upper stratosphere, maybe there could, there, there could be ways in which uh, we could deal with it before it actually falls through the skies, falls through the atmosphere to, to the ground, to ground level. And uh, so projects like that can be contemplated as soon as we realize and accept that uh, comets carry life, carry microbial life, carry uh, possibly viruses, and these viruses could have uh, adverse effects on humanity. Uh, so that's, I think that's my hope, that as soon as the paradigm shift from Earth-centered life to cosmic-centered life becomes accepted and becomes essentially ex established, then all these things will follow. I think there, there's got to be a major realignment in our scientific programs uh, following upon the discovery and the acceptance that there's been a major paradigm shift in science from uh, life centered on the earth to life centered uh, essentially on the universe. Uh, the short answer is that I think that there's very sparse funding at the moment for astrobiology generally. Uh, far too little compared to its potential importance. But, um, uh, but as when people realize that there's a pragmatic, practical reason for uh, studying astrobiology, then this might change. The other, the other aspect of, of getting new microbes uh, from the skies is that it may be possible to use these new microbes to generate even antibiotics. Uh, new microbes found in the deep oceans, in, in strange places on the surface of the earth, has uh, in the past yielded important uh, uh, sort of biochemical, biomedical tools. 
And so it's not impossible that uh, uh, that medicine, for example, would benefit from the discovery of, uh, of strains of bacteria that can maybe can be used to generate antibiotics, uh, and, and certainly in the case of uh, discovering new viruses that could cause pandemics, I think a forewarning would be really crucially important. Uh, so these are the, I think these are all uh, programs and projects for the future, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's bound to become important as, uh, as, the, uh, as the paradigm shift, as I said, was uh, more and more established, became more and more accepted.